Okay, welcome to you all again. Tara, could you lead us in prayer? Yes. Our Lord and our God, we do praise and thank you for your loving kindness and how you've been so good to us since the last time we were together. Father, we submit ourselves to you to, that your spirit would teach us, uh, would revive us, to give us the strength and energy that we need. We want to be mindful, Father, of those, Lord God, in California who are facing horrific situations with fires, those who are suffering still from the terrible thing that happened in the shooting. And Father, we ask you, Lord, to give those who lead our country wisdom. Father God, save those who are unsafe and lord god and help each one of us father to follow your directives forgive our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness lord god and give us strength for everything that you've already put before us in jesus name amen amen thank you okay um piggybacking on what kavita had just shared with us about the book that she is um, Kavita, I don't recall you giving me that title as the title you were going to review, unless I'm forgetting. Yeah, I had sent an email to you and you said, yes, these books are okay. In okay. fact, I picked it up from the library and from the BGU library. Okay, uh, library. okay good. Yeah. Because um, yeah. we do have a list, but that's fine. If you find something that is not on the list, um, okay. I just want you to check. There is just a lot written on mentoring, just a yes. lot, and a lot written on mentoring women. And yes. um, I will just explain to you that in terms of um, an academic approach, and, and for me, an academic approach doesn't take away from a practical approach. That is my own personal philosophy of education. Mm -hmm. Natalia, it was good to have you. An academic approach never takes away from the practical approach. But um, an academic approach means, among other things, that we have done um, studies on the issue. Studies, aka research, so that when we write, we are not r just writing from a perspective of opinion. We are writing mm -hmm. from a perspective of research, right? No, um, research doesn't necessarily mean that everything that you um, learn as a result of the research is applicable to every to the to the wider population. But what it is saying is that this issue is so important to you that you have committed time and resources to address it in a specific manner so that whatever results you have you will take those results and apply them so that is why when when i look at a, a book um i'm usually trying to look to see what on the girds that book is it just um stories and stories are powerful let me tell you that is it just stories is it opinion is it a mixture of looking at original research and also um taking that the findings from original research and applying it to um a given context so that's how i've chosen the books that is on in our recommended reading list. Um, both okay. books are among them, all of them, voice and agency, etc. They are based on research. We're going to be talking a little about um, this book. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Mentoring Away the Glass Ceiling in That's Academia yeah. by Marina. Have you seen that one? Mm -hmm. um, I think my first book review was on that. Uh, okay. Good. Yeah. I'm going so to I, um, yeah, planning to read voice and agency. I don't know if, if you saw that message, Tara, in one of the book reviews uh, like a couple of weeks back. Uh, there was a note mentioning like because we're studying these books in class, try to do a book review apart from the recommended reading. That's why I kind no, of went the ahead. Book review, mm -mm, the book review has to be, um, you could do a book review from the recommended reading list because the book review... Okay. Um, when we reference it in, in class, when I reference it in some of my, my PowerPoint presentations, mm -hmm. I may just be focusing on one aspect of the book. When you mm -hmm. do the book review, you would have read the entire book. Yes. So there's yeah. a difference. Oh, no. Um, that I don't know um, 
where you got that from, but that would not have come from me. Okay, so um, I want to go into the course, last week's discussion, because I, um, Tara has been referencing over and over again, and I appreciate that, um, informal mentoring. And um, this, this week's discussion, she raised it. And I want to just point out to you my response. So I'm thankful that Tara has been reminding us of the place and power of informal mentoring. So I'm going to go to the course to pick up on my response. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> okay, let me go to the course. Oh. And I really do appreciate the thoroughness of your responses. Oops, let me just go back up here. All right, let me go back. All right, lessons. I'll go to six and I'll go to six. Okay. <laughs> and I think it was, I think it was, a, was it the first discussion that you talked about informal mentoring? I don't remember, let me see. Uh, or was it the third one? I think it was the second one. I yeah, I was going to say. Let's see. What does red me mean? I, uh, on the screen. I don't know. Red me is my phone, the brand of my phone. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Sarah's. Okay. Uh, let's see. Huh. Does it say red me or my name? I don't know. What no, it says red, red me. Yes. Oh, okay. yeah, I, I just thought it was you when I saw it. No, it's not in this. <laughs> Let me go back. <sighs> it's not in two. I think it's in three. Anyhow, let's see. I think it's in I three. don't remember reading, so probably. I mean, I went back and read the discussions today, so probably it's in three. Um, Yes, it's this one here. Um, okay. Where did she tell her? You talked about informal mentor. Oh no, Tara, Tara. Wait, where is it? Down or up or something. Let's see. Yes, yes. Um, when she said, um, yes, this, this here, she said, this course has really added some vital components to my concept of mentoring, as I have shared the formal mentoring I see on my job is a far cry from the programs we have examined. I lean more towards informal mentoring, but the drawback has been boundaries. Um, so coming out of that, I just um, referenced the work of uh, Marina. And so I said, regarding your reference to formal and informal mentoring, I point you to chapter three of Marina's work. The chapter title is Navigating the Turbulent Boundaries of a PhD Program. The mm -hmm. researchers, ground, researchers sorry, grounded their research on what they call communications privacy management theory. CPM, and it is a method of understanding the ways people manage the dialectical tensions of disclosing and protecting privacy. They explain that, quote, CPM theory provides a valuable framework from which to examine the management of formal academic mentoring communication boundaries in ways that allow for another level of permeability through the establishment of informal peer mentoring programs 
that partner students, particularly older than average female students. And then I say, as students in a doctoral program, uh, you and Kavita should find this chapter a good read. Now, um, in, in, in this chapter, they are reporting on um, how this theory explains um, mentoring in a PhD program, mentoring women. And among other things, they um, remind us in terms of the statistics that there is a significant number of particularly older than average female students in the sample. But the, the, the point here is that this study is done in the context of formal mentoring. And in, 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 in academic settings, uh, universities and colleges, etc., cetera, uh, most, if not all of them, have some kind of formal mentoring program, um, both for students and for professors. In terms of professors, um, their departments have their own mentoring. And one of the purposes for that mentoring is to help professors to advance up the ladder, to get promotions, encourage them to learn the culture of the university so that they could become successful um, as, 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 as professors. And that's a formal piece. But in addition to the formal mentoring, there is always, um, in, in, in the academic context, there is a lot of informal mentoring that goes on, um, both um, among students and among faculty. And what this research is, 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 is um, acknowledging is that there is a role and a meaning <clears throat> and a contribution to be made to um, advancing women in academia through, <clears throat> sorry, informal mentoring. And what you find is that among students, you have the informal peer mentoring. Um, you have the situation where older students um, may mentor younger students from within the class context. I one of the interesting features in our colleges is when you work with um, in the classroom people across generations and one of the things that i that has always fascinated me and i've been impressed with and it's it's a standout in in some of the classes the um the diligence and the commitment of the older students and the younger students some of them do notice that the older students they will come in and they will bring their assignments in on time and if they're late they will apologize and it's a different approach and an attitude to <laughs> studies it stands out i'm telling you i could tell you stories about that but the younger students they start to pick up on it and um some of them uh, form friendships the older student the older um and a lot of these older people are women in the classroom. They form friendships and they encourage the younger ones to get with it in terms of their work. And that is informal. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then let me, as I'm in, let me just go to week seven. And um, just go over. This week and next week, you are starting to work on your projects. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the discussions that I've um, invited you to look at deal directly with your proposed project. They are not going to be graded discussions, but they are going to be foundational to getting you to focus on the project. And I'm going to ask you to share on what you're thinking about um, for, the, for your project. So we're going to look at this PowerPoint presentation, planning and designing a mentoring program. And then I'm asking you to think of these questions that will focus your attention on the mentoring program that you will design, because I want to give you the opportunity to get clarity 
on the scope of the project you would like to do. So I ask you to then list the questions that you have concerning the project. What will be the title of your project? And when I think of title, I also think of purpose. Your title usually reflects your purpose. Where and to whom will the, target, the program be target, targeted? That's important. Mm -hmm. Where will you offer the program? Is it as a church or some other organization, a nonprofit, et cetera? and state the purpose of the project. So I'd like to hear you, to have you start thinking and um, documenting, putting in writing answers to these questions, because these questions are foundational mm -hmm. to the project that you are going to do. So that is the first discussion. The second discussion, Um, there's an article in the info section. It's a very good and meaningful article to what we're doing here. It's called Personal Development Methodology. So I'd like you to read that article and say how you will use these guidelines in developing your program. You're going to find that article very helpful. So that's the second discussion. And like I said, it's an ungraded discussion, but I know you will give it your best because um, this, this, these two discussions focus your attention on your project. So let me stop here and ask you, what have you been thinking about in terms of your project? Uh, um, Tara, do you want to go first? No, I'm taking a nap. Go ahead. <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah, so in my nonprofit, we work with um, adolescent girls from um, underprivileged backgrounds and also from abused and abandoned and trafficked. You know, they are, they are victims of human trafficking and so on. So, um, you know, I'm thinking whether I should do that. Uh, you know, as a design mentoring program for those girls that we're counseling and doing aftercare and rehab for. Or the other <laughs> option that I've been thinking of is, um, you know, I, I was really challenged by mentoring women to bridge the gender gap uh, sort of thing. So I'm just wondering whether I should take, um, create a program that mentors um, university students um, as they pursue, you know, go from their uh, undergraduate to postgraduate degrees to mentor them into uh, people who are, you know, kind of leadership mentoring sort of thing. So I'm just kind of in two minds that I guess I, by this week I will decide which oh, one yes. I should take. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those are two, two um, powerful and relevant approaches um, okay. to mentoring, but with everything in a, in a course setting, you can only choose one. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let me push you. Um, and Tara, I'm going to do the same with you. So um, let, let's go to that discussion. Okay. Where we ask the questions, clarifying and understanding the project. Yes. What is going to be important is focusing. Now, mm -hmm. um, looking at, both ideas okay um what would be tell me which of identifying the one that you are talking about what okay. would you um say would be the purpose the main purpose of the mentoring program let's say you're talking about the the adolescent girls okay um, the purpose would be to, um, we are, so far we've only been doing like a counseling and an informal mentoring program with them. So if I did a, develop this as a, you know, mentoring curriculum or what have you, this would be used in developing the girls um, into crossing over, you know, into um, choosing a lifestyle that kind of, you know, 
uh, is positive instead of some of them are coming from a background where it's easy for them to go back in, in into sex work and that sort of thing um so basically mentoring them to uh, you know cross over and make wise choices and do well in life be self sufficient and you know kind of it will include stuff like career counseling it will include um stuff like uh, you know um what is a life skills building confidence in them dealing with the trauma of abuse uh, and crossing over and making sure that you know that uh, they live a complete life leaving the past behind sort of thing um so okay. that would be what the adolescent girls project would, would be yeah mentoring project would be okay let me stop and say to you um kavita there are programs mentoring programs that are designed for that purpose that you've just um, okay described. yeah yeah that doesn't mean you couldn't do yours but i'm yeah. saying to, that to say to you look at those programs find one or yeah. two such programs and okay. see um how they focus okay. that would be one way um to look okay. at it Okay. okay. Now the second program, what would do you mm -hmm. what would you define as the purpose of the one for the university um the women in university mm -hmm. moving on to graduate work? Yes, per personally I'm kind of being more inspired and challenged to do the second one <laughs> because that so. is mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's going to be something new for me and uh, for me I see even this doing this course and doing this project is kind of ushering me into a new season in my life where i'm going to take mentoring seriously um so developing that because def i i in my context um we do not have mentoring programs like you have in the us it's absolutely you know i have not come across you know the mentoring programs that i've been reading now i'm like really inspired but we do not it is not very common we've heard of coaching in 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 the work uh, world but not for students not for you know students pursuing education pushing them on to leadership bridge the gender gap right from when they are students and you know, not give up on their dreams and giving them you know that support to move on to cross over in that sense so i find it challenging because i have not personally seen it here so <laughs> that's why i'm kind of inspired to do that Okay. No, um that the second one where well, we have a lot of literature even in the course that would help yeah. you in that. They okay. what that we just talked about that you have already reviewed mentoring away okay. the glass ceiling. Yes. That would yes. be relevant reading. And the yes. other one women and leadership research theory and practice would certainly be um helpful to you as you think. Could you could you, could you say that again? Women the, the second one it's in the okay. reading list. Oh it's yeah, yeah. Okay. Women and, yeah. and leadership research theory and practice. Okay, okay. Okay. Good. So you get a sense then for yes. how I would like you to start thinking. Okay. About your project, Tara. Let's move on to you. <laughs> okay. I um uh, mine is uh, more in a uh, I guess a church context because what I would like to do is to in my survey uh, that I'm creating, it, and my survey it will be, let me say this, will be done for women across the board, just uh, uh, regardless of what church they're in or whatever. I'm searching out what has caused such deep divisions and brokenness in women by other women. Um, and, and then once understanding that, creating the mentoring program to help bring and facilitate a healing and a unit, unity that would cause when women come into a church, instead of them coming into almost a hostile sometimes environment or a suspicious environment, uh, they will come into something more nurturing. Um, and I want to use uh, the rela relationship between Naomi and Ruth uh, because that was certainly to me an excellent mentoring situation uh, of her telling her, this is the way you go. And of course, the Bible tells us the older women are to be teachers of the young. So um, just, at first exploring what has happened and and not just with women but girls because girls have a view of women today um they either see you as being um oh you know old-fashioned and and you know 
in that vein. Uh, they don't want to hear what you have to say, or <laughs> they want you to come down to their level and be their friend and, and mm -hmm. stuff, but it can't work that way. There has to be a relationship where we're bringing them up. And because of all that we're seeing in media and we're seeing in um, entertainment, it gets harder and harder to reach those girls. Uh, so that's what I really want to do is to create that kind of, uh, of atmosphere to say, okay, what has caused the hurt? What has caused the rip? What has caused the brokenness woman to woman? Um, uh, and then how do we come about repairing through mentorship? Okay, um, some questions and observations. I like that you mentioned this survey that you propose to do um, because one of the um, the methods that we use when we are thinking of programmer project development mm -hmm. is to get the in some input from the clientele or okay. the, that we hope to address mm -hmm. so i do like that you you're thinking in terms of the survey. Um, however, I have some observation and questions for you in terms of what you have shared. Mm -hmm. um, you did say that, and tell me if I'm hearing you correctly here, that the purpose of the survey is to find out from the women um, why or what has been their experiences of hurt. Am I right? It hurt disillusionment, uh, disappointment okay. uh, from women from women that they've encountered within a church setting. Okay. Uh, yeah. No. Um. Here is my um observation on that. I always think that um the best approach to do is to start with a positive, and then um if there is negative, it will come out. So my, um, my suggestion to you on that survey is rather than focusing in on hurts, is to ask women to share what has been their experience of relationships with other women. And I notice your focus is in the church. So I would put in, in the church. So let them tell you. And I would, I would um, suggest that you're going to hear both positive and negative mm -hmm. if you use that approach. Because I'm suggesting to you that there are positive relationships. And, if, yeah. and, and what, here's, my, here's my take on that. There is, I, I, I'm suggesting to you that uh, we, are, we may be surprised that there are more positive than negative relationships in terms of women in the church. Mm -hmm. Why do I say that? From plain observation. Mm -hmm. Look, in most churches, women far outnumber men. And that <laughs> That's true. is coming true. out from relationships. Mm. From positive relationships, right? So I'm suggesting, therefore, that you use an approach that is open that's it's an open-ended approach mm -hmm. let mm -hmm. the women tell you their stories mm -hmm. and then when you collate the data you tease you know it will tell it, mm -hmm. the data will speak for itself but i really right. like the idea that you're thinking in terms of a survey I want, and i want i want to look at the differences according to age race and culture because okay. ultimately what I want to see is uh, if there's some kind of invisible wall between any of those areas, mm -hmm. uh, what is it going to take to change to get that wall you know, down? Um, and, I, and I think a lot of it is uh, just misinformation or misunderstanding uh, as opposed to something hardcore uh, and stuff. But um, so I want to you know, divide it into those segments of age, uh, race, and culture. So, and I want to, you know, of course, look at those who are, who have committed to the church and those who have just gone and left because of whatever. I, I mm. want to look at the left. Okay. Um, can, I, can I ask you to do something for me when you design that survey? Um, mm -hmm. Send it to me and let me look at it and give you feedback. And, oh, and yeah. 
that survey is going to be part of your project because what you're proposing to do, which is the correct thing, is that you are getting input from the population you hope to serve through this program. Mm -hmm. So that is an excellent approach to, to the study, to the, to the project. Good. I appreciate your sharing that. Okay, let me share with you the PowerPoint presentation. I want to share it as a PowerPoint. So I'm going to come out of the course. Mm, should I do that? Yeah, I like to share it as a PowerPoint. And um, so let me stop share for a minute and go and pull it up from my um, from my program and then I'll share again. No, I'd better share before because it has a way. I'm sharing again. I've come out. Eva, what time is it there? I have 11. You're asking me? Um, yeah. It's about sure. 9.45. Time to go to bed. Oh, really? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I, wonder, I wondered if you were sitting in your bed with curlers and hair cream on and, and, and stuff getting ready to go to sleep. <laughs> I don't need to curl my hair. I'm trying to save. Um, I think I can hear you better when the video is not on. <laughs> That's why if you're not using the. Uh, I've been having some problems with my connection. So, yeah, so I'm not dressed for work for sure, but. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, I'm, I've pulled up our PowerPoint presentation because I, I prefer to, um, I call it Instructional Design Applied to Planning a Mentoring Program. Um, okay. For week seven to nine, we will apply the various concepts, theories, and practices to the planning and design of a mentoring program of your choice. Since there is a learning and educational component to mentoring, I will have us examine and apply instructional design theory to planning and design. Oh, I don't see anything. Oh, you're not. I don't see anything. Oh, Tara, don't see anything. Do you, Tara, do you see anything? No, no. we don't. Oh, I, can't. I thought I shared the screen. Okay, let me come out of here. And show. If you're not seeing it, it means that I'm not in share screen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. Let me share. Are you seeing my screen now? No. No. I see you. Okay. All right. Can you see my screen? No, I'm just starting up. Oh yeah. Oh yes. See the class. The class screen, not the PowerPoint. That's right, because I came out of the class to go to the PowerPoint so that I could share it as a PowerPoint. So let me go here. Okay, quick access. Are you seeing now? Yeah. Good. I see your all your files. Mm -hmm. Ah, here it comes. Here it comes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you're seeing it now, are you? No. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay. Good. So we're looking at applying instructional design to your planning your program. Okay. For week seven to nine, we will apply the various concept theories and practices to the planning and design of a mentoring program of your choice. Since there is a learning and educational component to mentoring, I will have us examine and apply instructional design theory to planning and designing a mentoring program. In this presentation, I have highlighted Bloom's taxonomy with a view to having you use this to develop the goals and objectives of your proposed mentoring program. After viewing the PowerPoint presentation, I will have you write at least three mentoring outcomes that you will desire for the participants in your proposed personal development program. 
we will discuss what steps you will take to get part participants to own this project. Um, instructional design apply to planning and designing a mentoring program. Maximize the effectiveness, efficiency, and appeal of instruction and other learning experiences. By now, I, I guess you recognize that mentoring represents a learning situation. Uh, mentoring does like education. There are outcomes that you should be able to identify for your mentoring program. It's an educational experience. Um, the process consists of determining the current state and needs of the learner, defining the end goal of instruction, and creating some intervention to assist in the, in the transition. Like an educational program, mentoring looks at the current state of the, the, the participants. As Tara pointed out, she's going to do a survey. So you want to look at the state, current state of the participants and understand their needs and their goals so that when you design a program, it would match their needs and their goals so that they would be willing to participate in the program that you have designed for their benefit. Mm -hmm. The outcome of this instruction may direct, may be, sorry, directly observed for observable and scientifically measured or completely hidden and assumed because we are intentional in designing a program um in our in thinking through our design we are going to be um direct and clear about the outcomes that we are looking for and these would have to be measurable outcomes mm -hmm. so that um is important um, and I just did a quick um, rundown I'm not going to spend time on this on Benjamin Bloom because the the, the um, foundation that we're looking at is his taxonomy and we are going to apply it to the development of our program um, this is the classic Bloom ta um, Bloom's taxonomy at the highest level is the ability to evaluate, to judge the value, etc. At the lowest level is what we call knowledge. The um, basic content question, what do you know? Mm -hmm. When we think about mentoring, as we reflect on the, the general purpose of mentoring, we are, this is not where we are at all. Mentoring, the nature of mentoring is of such that it should force us to look at the higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy, uh, analysis, synthesis, evaluation. Um, so this is foundational. You can't get here without being here. But this is foundational and this is assumed. But we start to uh, make an impact when we get people to start thinking in terms of uh, analysis, synthesis, evaluation. So I'm just um, reminding you of that. And then here we have the meaning of these uh, major components to analyze, sorry, to evaluate is to compare and discriminate between ideas, to assess the values of theories, presentations, make choices based on reasoned argument, uh, verify the value of, ec of evidence, recognize subjectivity. To synthesize is to use old ideas to create new ones, generalize from given facts, we need knowledge from several areas, predict, draw conclusions. To analyze is to be able to see patterns, to look at organization of parts, recognize hidden meanings, and identify components. Okay, I'm sure yes. Tara is familiar with this from her um, experience as a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, then there are a number of, there's language that is used when we um, 
use the taxonomy and so they've identified for us the language in these areas and again i just point you to the higher levels mm -hmm. uh analyze calculate compare contrast to evaluate is to argue to assess to attach to choose compare etc bloom's taxonomy there's a ref sorry let me go back to the There has been a revision to Bloom's taxonomy. Um, in the 1990s, Lauren Anderson, who was a former student of Bloom, led a new assembly which met for the purpose of updating the, the taxonomy, hoping to add relevance for 21st century students and teachers. It was published in 2001, and we have here a list of the language of the revised taxonomy so we have the old terms and the new terms evaluation synthesis and analysis are the old terms at the higher level in the new terms creating evaluating and analyzing creating um, we take note of the higher level and then we have a description sorry we have a description of these. Um, oh no, I have to get the previous. Creating, generating new ideas or ways of viewing things, designing, constructing, planning, evaluating to justify a decision or course of action, check, checking, hypothesizing, critiquing, experimenting, judging. So this is the kind of language that I would expect you to, of course, first of all, think through and use in your program development. Now mm -hmm. I want us, okay, in the few minutes we have left. Um, I, I, I don't have any minutes left. Yes, My kids are ready to come in. Okay, so. I understand. Um, for ex I just give you a sample of a mentoring outcome. When, okay. um, when a mentee has completed this program, she will enroll in a college course so that she can earn credits towards the job or the profession that she desires to pursue. This comes from a program um, that would be like somewhat like Tara's, sorry, Kavita's proposed program. But mm -hmm. here, the personal development uh, program was aimed at um, women who had not yet gone to college. Mm -hmm. And so one of the outcomes of the program would, was that after they have completed this program, they will enroll in a college course mm -hmm. to earn credits towards a job or profession that they would like to pursue. Now this out outcome falls under the higher order thinking of Bloom's taxonomy, for example, synthesis or creating. So this is an, a sample, an example of the approach that I want you to think about. Bye, Tara. Bye Have bye. A good day. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. bye, -bye. okay. So, Kavita, any question or comment on this? Does it make sense to you as you think of developing your own program? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of. Uh... Yeah, I, I think I need... To, will this presentation be available? Oh, yes, already, of course. Okay. okay. Yes, so I would like you to go and look at it again. Yes. Because I yes. would like you to apply it yes. to your okay. own program development. Yeah. Certainly. Okay. Good. So um, that brings us to the end, unless you have a question to ask. Uh, what I thought I would do is I do I I'm going to try my best to see uh, because you know everything that I've read is so fresh in my mind and the fact yes. that I probably need to need more time to finish my project. But what I will uh, I thought I would do is kind of outline it and probably send it to you to see what you think of the title yes, and definitely other yes yeah. okay. and that's why I have designed the kind of discussion that we have this week. Okay. It will get you to start thinking and having okay. um, develop an outline that I would look at and give you feedback. Certainly, um, okay. I'm going to just send that.
to Tara so she um, thinks and does the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Any other question or comment? Um, I'm okay. Uh, I'm, I'm good, Claire. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Well, you have a good week. You too. You too. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.